scary part isn't that the offensive slump will continue forever. It won't. It can't. The scary part is that other types of slumps will just kind of alternate and make it all just one big mishmash of slumps. Good morning to you. Good Thursday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Pirates. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or hockey. I also offer Daily Shots of Steelers and Penguins where you found this. Rockies 4, Pirates 3. I was over there covering this ninth loss in 10 games for DK Pittsburgh Sports. And I'm running out of material as it applies to this team being unable to score. Not just not scoring in the clutch, just not scoring. Not just not hitting with runners on base, just not hitting. 15 total runs in 10 games. It's almost unimaginable except that you're watching it. It's freaky on one hand to see them put runners on all three bases with nobody out as they did in the sixth inning yesterday and come away with nothing. And yet you sat there expecting it the entire time, didn't you? Yeah, you were just wondering in what order it was going to happen or in what ways it was going to happen. But I'm going to reiterate here that it can't continue happening. There's a great big water finds its own level feel to this beautiful game that I don't know exists in any other game. If you're going to be a 250 career hitter or you establish yourself as being someone who's right in that range, you start off 300, you're about to go through a 200 slump, okay? You're just going to end up where you're supposed to end up. And as such, sooner rather than later, you're going to see the Pirates score runs and in bunches. But what if something else sputters along the way? That's what I'm thinking about here. You know, earlier this season, way back near the beginning, actually, Rich Hill pitched a game in which he allowed seven runs in four innings. Touchdown. And... Poof, just like that, it disappeared from the public eye. Why? Well, for one, it was the home opener. For another, the Pirates roared back and beat the White Sox. But yesterday, with no margin for error, one squeaky little ground ball that went back to Hill. After two outs, after only one run had been scored, in a mostly tidy and controllable rally that Colorado was having, Hill couldn't field it. Just just had the ball clank off his glove. Rockies had an extra life. Rockies get an RBI single. Rockies get another RBI single. Next thing you know, the game is tied. Boom, just like that. Just like that. I asked Hill after the game, what was that? What went wrong on that play? Yeah, I missed it. Uh, it was a terrible Nothing play. No, I just missed it. Picked my head up, and uh, <laughs> you know that shouldn't happen here. And uh, you know that cost us the game. So uh, once again, it falls on me. And uh, you know, going to sit on this for the next five days. Get ready for the next one. But you know, frustration is uh, definitely there with that. Uh, very easy ground ball. Should have been able to execute it and didn't. I got to tell you, Hill didn't sound like that. After the home opener, after allowing those seven runs, even though he did a much better job yesterday of actually pitching, which is his job, than he did in that other game. Why? Because everyone's feeling it now. Everyone's wearing this scarlet letter of shame or whatever because the offense can't score runs. Everything gets magnified. Remember how we were all calling the Pirates tons of fun just because of their base running? Because they could steal at will? Well, everyone's kind of figured that out. And now, all of a sudden, teams never better than Colorado, by the way, at this, 
were able to sniff out every single time the pirates want to send somebody. And they're throwing over. And they're keeping them close. And even after that second pickoff expires, they're timing their high fastballs to the catcher so the catcher can get out of the crouch and fire down to second. And they're, they're getting thrown out like crazy now. The Pirates have now been caught stealing 13 times. That's the most in the majors. It only feels like all 13 of those have come in the past week. They've been picked off three times. All of that aggressiveness, all of a sudden, isn't so adorable. Andrew McCutcheon yesterday was talking about how it makes sense to him that they're making more outs on the bases now because teams can focus more on what the Pirates are doing on the bases, whereas previously, the Pirates had everything going on. You had to worry about the guy at the plate. You had to worry about this guy and that guy. And the person stealing bases was just like an afterthought. Like, seriously, I'm supposed to keep up with that too? That's not my theory. That's Kutch's. This is what this team needs to be most concerned about. This for you as someone who follows this team closely enough to have pressed play on a podcast with this name today is what you need to be the most concerned about. They will hit again. But the question is whether they will hit again and then in turn, whether they'll run again, whether they'll score again, whether their starting pitching will be anywhere near what it was, anywhere in the solar system of what it was just a couple of weeks ago. And the fielding and the bullpen. This, this is why what the Pirates did in April was at such a, a giddy high. It's not that they were fluky. It's that the convergence of all of those facets happened at the same time. Everything went right. And now, I believe because of the hitting... Nothing's really going right. When we come back, J1Q. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern. That's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of Steak on a Stone, an eating experience, underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800 degree stone and you do the rest. It's a ton of fun, it's a great meal, and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in Pittsburgh. North Shore Tavern, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. Your front door, your car, your bike, your computer, your gun. Safety is a habit. Every day you lock and secure your home and everything you want to keep safe. Gun safety and responsible storage are no different and the best way to help prevent accidents, misuse, and theft. If you have a firearm, own it, respect it, and secure it. Visit projectchildsafe.org. Brought to you by the National Shooting Sports Foundation and the Bureau of Justice Assistance. J1Q comes from Phil, who says, Hey, DK, the most impressive thing to me about the Pirates' start was their approach at the plate. The patient at bats, everyone was trying to do their bit, playing station to station. And it seems to me that the biggest change during the slump has been their approach at the plate, with everyone except Kutch and Connor Joe swinging at everything and trying to hit eight-run homers every time up. My question is, does the responsibility for this lie with the coaching and Andy Haynes, or is just an execution slash mental problem on the part of the hitters? Well, as as always, Phil, the truth is going to be somewhere in a gray, boring area. But when I hear the hitters sounding as confounded, as befuddled as they did after this game, everybody except Kutch, I'm wondering... If it isn't some sort of commonality, when you see it spread across the entire team the way it has, I'm wondering if it isn't some sort of lack of communication or lack of focus. The only hitter, and this is singular, that I see on this team alter their literal approach toward a situation 
believe it or not, isn't one of the two guys you mentioned. It's Jiwon Bay. Bay came up in the ninth inning as a pinch hitter, had a man on first, two outs, understood the situation, understood that the worst possible thing he could do is strike out. I mean, you don't want to make an out of any kind, but he needs to keep the train moving, right? So he reaches out a bat, pokes the ball basically into left field for what would amount to a nice double. Now the Pirates have runners on second and third, and they at least had an opportunity. You know, Josh Palacios, the kid that just came up from AAA, had a chance where if he'd gotten a hit, the Pirates win the game. You know, they're carrying Palacios off on their shoulders. But it's because of what Bay did. That is a lost art. Okay? The only reason Bay can do that is because he came to Pittsburgh from the other side of the planet where they'll still play baseball that style. You just don't see it here anymore, which you see a lot more of. And this isn't to pick on Kibrian Hayes because he's actually hit kind of okay before yesterday when he went over four, but Key was swinging out of his shoes. And one time he ran into a ball, he just murdered it, and it went right at an outfielder, which happens a lot to him. But he also had two strikeouts that were just, what are you trying to do, Key? You know? There's guys out there on the bases. Just advance them. And I talked to him after the game. And we spoke about approach and spoke about what needs to change. And he brought up on his own that the team needs to kind of shorten up and adjust. And I said, you mean kind of like what Bay did? And he goes, yeah, that. I'm not the hitting coach. I'm not remotely qualified to be the hitting coach any more than Andy Haynes is to do an every weekday podcast. But when I hear the manager stating openly when I asked him about it, about the the hitting and the general lack of hitting, and he says to me things like, you know, we're out of sync, we're out of rhythm, we don't have our timing, uh, we're in between. That's one of his favorite phrases. We're in between, meaning they're undecided. You can't convince me that that isn't coaching. Otherwise, why would you even have coaches? I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Pirates. The team has a day off today, but we will be back tomorrow. Tomorrow.